we're back to another spooky upload and this video serves as a spiritual sequel to my 13 ghosts video. It's not required viewing but it does have some context about the man behind the camera. The link is in the description. So let's get right to it and remember, be not afraid. Alright so, after the financial success of 13 ghosts, Dark Castle wanted to go in a different new direction. The studio's original plan was to remake all of William Castle's independently directed movies. Yet by the third year, those plans were completely abandoned. Director Steve Beck proved to be a good director for the studio in his work for 13 Ghosts that he was given the opportunity to direct their third film, Chimera. Chimera was Mark Hanlon's script before numerous rewrites formed it into Ghost Ship. So, sure. I rolled out of 13 Ghosts and it made a significant impact with the people. Uh, at Warner's and with Joel, they're like, great, the guy knows what he's doing, let's get him in this, mm -hmm. give him the next one, because that's what Joel was doing. He was just like, mm -hmm. as long as you didn't screw up, keep going. You know, as long as you're making me money and, and not being a headache, keep going, because I've got enough of that. The first draft written in the mid-90s is said to follow a salvage crew stranded within an abandoned ship, the Chimera, and end up going insane to the point of murderous tendencies. Steve Beck describes it as, Seven people who discover a ship that had a lot of gold and they start hunting each other down. There was no gore and no supernatural elements in it. This script was chopped around and then sold to WB and everything was set up to begin production. That was until a tragic event unfolded. In 2001, the US got attacked and according to director Beck, WB decided to change the script from an ambiguous villain to a straightforward good versus evil storyline. This last minute change disappointed the actors who signed off for one thing only to be told that they're going to be working on something completely different. The original screenplay was more of a psychological thriller and a little bit internalized in its horror, says writer Mark Hanlon. The final version is definitely a lot gorier and is characterized mainly by its supernatural elements. The film was ultimately released on October 25th, 2002 in accordance with a Dark Castle plan of owning the theaters on every Halloween. Unfortunately, the movie had heavy competition. It debuted third in the box office behind Jackass the movie and the now horror classic The Ring. It opened with $11 million in its first weekend. In the end, it brought in $30 million domestically, $38 million internationally for a worldwide total of $68 million. Another financial success off a $20 million budget. Critically speaking, this film received slightly more negative reviews than, than Steve Beck's prior film, 13 Ghosts. On IMDb, Ghost Ship has a 5.6 out of 10, 28 on Metacritic, and 2.5 out of 5 on Letterboxd. Rotten Tomatoes has a critics with 15% and an audience of 37%. Ooh, the ship and ghost puns were everywhere. Aside from those critics, Roger Ebert's review of the movie is almost on par with his 13 Ghosts review where he praised the set design but basically yawned at the lack of scares in the movie. He writes, It breaks no new ground as horror movies go, but it does introduce an intriguing location. Better than you expect, but not as good as you hope. In an interview posted days after the release, Joel Silver revealed that he's more interested in releasing a fun flick rather than worrying about the reviews. We try to make these pictures that the audiences enjoy and like to go see. I think that if we do our job well, we don't take ourselves seriously on these movies. This movie is a Halloween party, and it's meant to go to the theater and just have a good time. Laugh, be scared, be grossed out a little bit, but enjoy it. As far as the general consensus goes, I think it's unanimously agreed that the first 10 minutes of the movie is considered as one of the top horror movie openings of all time. Anyways, if you do decide to watch the movie regardless of rating, the movie itself is easily digestible at 91 minutes and it's classified as horror and suspense with an R rating. Juliana was born on June 8, 1966 in Spring Valley, New York. Juliana plays the role of Epps, a member of the salvage crew that unfolds the mystery of the supernatural ship. Prior to Ghost Ship, she was in The Man from Elysian Fields in 2001 and Evelyn in 2002. After Ghost Ship, she was in Slingshot in 2005 and the Darwin Awards in 2006. Gabriel Byrne was born on May 12, 1950 in Dublin, Ireland. Gabriel plays the role of Murphy, the salvage crew's leader that gets hired to board the lost ship. 2002 had a number of films he was a part of. 
Virginia's Run, Spider, and Ghost Ship. Afterwards, he went on to be in The Shade in 2003, as well as Emmett's Mark in the same year. Ghost Ship marked Steve Beck's second and final film. Although he attempted to launch other projects afterwards, none succeeded. After these efforts stalled, he shifted back to directing commercials before eventually retiring. But after I got done with the films, I went back to doing what I did before and was happy until I retired. The film begins in 1962 with a luxury cruise liner, the Antonia Graza, in the middle of a party. The happy setting switches to a more sinister tone where we see someone flipping a switch, making a wire to slice through the crowd and causing a gruesome massacre, leaving the ship abandoned and adrift. Cut to the present day, where a salvage crew gets tipped off that the Antonia Graza is floating in the Bering Sea. The crew boards the ship to assess its value and potential for salvage. As the crew splits up, each one begins to encounter supernatural events. Epps and the crew investigate the ship's history and discover that the Antonia Graza was cursed. They learn about the tragic event involving the ship's crew that betrayed the guests. The spirits of the ship reveal that they were victims of said violent act. The ghosts are trapped and are now seeking revenge and release from their torment. As the crew members are picked off one by one by the spirits, paranoia and desperation set in. They struggle to survive and find a way to escape the haunted ship. Epps discovers the ship's fate and confronts the main spirit, which is revealed to be Ferryman. Epps manages to escape and the final shot reveals that the ghosts have now moved on to possibly wreak havoc in the mainland. I don't know. I didn't get the ending. Uh, before I let you go, I'd like for us to stand back and simply admire both films completing Steve Beck's filmography. He gave us a quick one-two punch and it is a perfect double feature to put on your Halloween party. And that's enough time. If you're still looking for a spooky movie, I suggest this one from the catalog. Uh, 